uh, light the, troubles uh, uh, with our camera. That allows us to see three things. Uh, one is the Raman effect, uh, which is uh, how do we get molecular uh, molecular bonding. So the you know, hydrogen and oxygen make water, so we can see that. Uh, carbon right, and oxygen make carbonate, we can see that. Um, uh, that's the Roman effect. Uh, we can see fluorescence, uh, which is a uh, different phenomenon. Either happens a bit, look like a bit a after Raman, so it's a slower effect. Oh. And this will tell us about uh, uh, pigments. All the organic molecules that we have here are highly fluorescent. So is manganese, by the way, and cobalt that mm -hmm. we saw in different dives. So all of those elements are also fluorescent, uh, so we can wait a little bit longer and look at the fluorescence. And lastly, uh, we can see luminescence which is another light phenomenon um, that involves light absorb absorbing right, by the yeah. by the uh, rocks and in this case it's like when you go to a geology or a science museum right, science center and you f flicker switch kind of uh, on and off uh, with black that, light that typically that and suddenly all the rocks there glow the, like crazy uh, yellow green purple pink the um, most that is luminescence that the and that is also very informative of uh, right. of uh, what the what the different minerals you have in the rock there so one instrument three things raman fluorescence, luminescence. Is mm -hmm. that normal for uh, spectrometers no, to have, no, have all three in one, or is that just specific for this instrument? No, this is very unique. Uh, oh. It's very unique. It requires very specialized electronics and optics uh, that are fairly new uh, in, you know, in, in the market. They've been researched for decades, but now they're finally small enough that we can put them in a, in a system like this. So uh, that's why you know, this is one of the first systems of this class uh, because it's been really, really hard to bring the lab to the field uh, because of, you know, things were very, very bulky, uh, very delicate. Uh, and only now we've been able to do this uh, time, we call it time gating. Uh, it's another another fun word, perhaps. Uh, lacing, gating. Uh, we have a few of those uh, <laughs> that we can <laughs> keep dropping on, on, on everybody here. Ready for some sandy blue. So I love this one. <laughs> Somebody sent us in a whale shark shanty in honor of Paula's birthday. <laughs> That's really sweet. Yes, I will pass along the message. Happy birthday, Paula. One day late. That's my guess, either Crino or Brasingen, but I'm all, I can't tell yet. Chalmark mark in the middle of nowhere. Jeez, uh. Oh yeah, I guess that is a trial mark, isn't it? We've, we're seeing this step planing rock kind of thing in linear features too, so I'm not 100% sure if that's a trawl mark or just a depression, yeah, but it totally could be a trawl mark, couldn't it? A light one, but... It seemed pretty straight, but... It did, I no, I, I totally... I, my brain didn't process that, but now that you say it, it does kind of look like that. There's a cliff to jump off of out here somewhere. Yonder into the blue. Not very tall, though. Lynette, when we all have dreams, 
and like my dreams are of walking around just just going for long walks when i'm on board are these are sandy plains your dreams like just sand sand as far as the eye can see are, are you talking to me no lynette no. <laughs> so okay so is this like your dreams like your good dreams that you have while on board nautilus just beautiful sand as far as the eye can see the same way mine is just like going for long walks yeah <laughs> yeah no i'm happy just keep it get there as quick as we can. On that same note though, Corley, are yours just like boulder fields and active volcano sites? I've been having a lot of um, strange dreams about being on the ship <laughs> recently, <laughs> and they're not geology related. <laughs> and they're actually quite alarming, so. <laughs> Actually, the yeah. first one was like a couple nights ago, and I had this dream <laughs> that there was something that was in the food that made people go crazy. I feel like that's kind not of, a dream. I feel like that's a reality. No, but it like kind of turned people into zombies. But since we have different watch schedules, like only one watch will eat mm -hmm. for the first part of a meal, and then another watch will eat for the second part of a meal. Oh. So it's only that's certain people right were going My crazy. Mental status. And then we had a whole discussion about the p everyone's different watches and if they thought that their watch could take on the other watches in case there was some sort of chaos that happened on the boat. So hopefully everyone's prepared to fight. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I definitely had a moment yesterday when Loopy told me that they only brought chocolate or only brought oatmeal raisin cookies on board. Yes, that same reaction. Wait, that was w wait what did you say? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I love it because Chris also had like whiplash, like what? Um, <laughs> they only brought oatmeal raisin cookies on board. There's no chocolate chip. And you're saying that's a dream? Or no, is that, that was, shark. no, that was, that's reality. Yeah, oh, yeah. shark. <gasps> shark. How cute. So man, just a uh, little forest out. Do we, is this a type of cat shark, yeah, lantern yeah, shark? Uh, dog shark probably. Dark shark, they're in the same fam day family. They're in the same family as the lantern sharks. It's a little too fast for us. If we got the leash, can we check out the crinoid? When Roger. Uh, what about the crinoid? Just zoom, please, if you got the leash. Yeah, go ahead, Daryl. So come down another five. It's a little unusual to see um, these out here on the sand, the unstalked ones. But that looks... Yeah, that's a crinoid. All right, that's good enough for us, thanks. Okay. Science, so is there anything special about Waypoint 3? Nope. Uh, Okay, we just want to head northeast. Yep, we just want to, I mean, I frankly, ideally, we would just probably make contact with this um, slope feature and stick on it, but it's like the worst possible mo ship motion, so right. the, the zigzagging was tacking back and forth of it. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. 
There's a person online saying no chocolate chip cookies on board is like saying all the ca all the coffee is decaf. No, we'd go to port if that was the case. <laughs> like it, it's in the in uh, some ships union contracts, it's actually written in that if the ship runs out of coffee, you have to go into port. I'm not kidding. I take it this has happened on multiple occasions where it's now written into ship contracts. Yeah. Yep. Oh. I fully, I know, yeah, I'm out. with you. I did want to turn the ship around yesterday when I found out there's no chocolate chip cookies. No, it's a rock pen. What is this? It's a rock pen. It looks weird. Oh, I see. It was just kind of folded over. Zoom in there if you want. I got time. Anthopathelum is the Latin. Yeah. Yep, I can totally see that. Yes, please. Okay. Oh, a little, is that a little hermit crab? Yep. I have to zoom in on the little guy. Roger. It's a little bit hard to see him. He's hiding underneath the sand. So if you look in the Atalanta view, you can see these long vertical striations in the sand. Um, and it's possible they're trawl scars. Okay, it can't go away. Like a trawling net from yep. a commercial fishing boat? Yep. I honestly wouldn't have expected them out here, um, where we are in the world. Yeah. But I also am having trouble coming up with explanations of long linear features that are that linear and parallel to each other. Um, it could be a, a stepped paleo shoreline kind of structure, certainly, but um, but I'm not sure. But it, I'm, I'm looking for more definitive signs of whether these are trawl scars or not. And the way these work is that they're giant, you know, basically bags made out of net with what are called doors and mm -hmm. the doors deflect the net open and ride across the bottom and leave these scars across the seafloor. And in other parts of the Pacific, finding them on the flat top, flat sandy tops of the seamounts are pretty common um, up in the Emperor Seamount chain. And, um, but like I said, I wouldn't have expected them this far away from, from a major port out here uh, at this depth. It wouldn't be uh it's not like there's a lot of fish either, right? Right. I mean we haven't we haven't seen a single ship since we left Honolulu out here. Um, I mean there's not a lot of uh fish here and either. There's not a lot of fish, absolutely. So I I, I wanna say it's natural and geological, but it is awfully linear. Um Is there any historical data about people coming out and fishing? Uh, if they exist, I don't have ready access to it. Um, on what the the amount of fishing out here, but the fishing I'm aware of out here is generally purse seining, um, which would not no, have impact this depth this. at all. And I could, and these totally might be geological. Like looking at them in in Herc's camera, it looks geological. Looking at Atalanta's camera, it looks Maybe not. You just see an uh, iris on Atlanta a little bit. So question, uh, if weird. this was a dredge, and because we do so much, um, or sorry, not dredge, but 
the trawl net, and there's so much trawl netting, you know, with the shrimping industry in the Gulf. How long will it take before the bottom can recover, like the seafloor? Because right now, how long could this have possibly been down here? Like a year, five years, ten years? A long time, very, very long time potentially. I don't, I don't know how many years exactly, but certainly on the order of many years. They're just there is there is a decent amount of flow down here, um, but I'm seeing no large bioturbation. Like they're definitely the last watch said they saw some worm traces and worm holes, but I'm seeing no you know big sea cucumbers moving around, a couple urchins. So it's not a very active seafloor mixing things up. But so Oh, I was going to say, so we have a couple of people online who are wondering, was this uh, some kind of scientific, maybe dredging, maybe sampling from back in like the 50s, 60s, 70s? 100% possible, yep. There have, been, there have definitely been a couple trawling, rock trawling expeditions out here. Coralie probably knows way more about them than I do. Um, but, but yes, there they definitely have been a few out trawls out here targeting rock samples and stuff to un help understand the age of the seamounts. Mm -hmm. What's the bushy black thing on the right? Uh, push in there, Daryl. This looks like a tuft of hydroids. Very similar to the one we sampled the other day. So I thought deep sea hydroids only grew on existing coral tighter. structure. Yeah, I meant to look that up. The I forgot to. That's where we see them a lot, but I think they can all, some can also build some of their own structure. But I meant to look that up. Steve, are you listening? And this one looks like it does have an egg case at the bottom as well, just like the one we collected the other day. Uh, trying to. Herc's uh, struggling here. I'm That's facing fine. downhill. I got to come around the other way if you want to. Hey, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, w this would be a good place for us to to shoot this because it's, it's big enough, I think, for Dan to to stay on top. Uh, sure. I'm happy with that. If you want to, Dan, if you want to try and spectrometer this one. What's that? If you want to uh, try and get some um, spectrometer readings on this, please. Right there. So did you want to tight zoom pizza. on the th th three, three meters altitude, please, Dan. Go tight there for a minute, there. Really? Oh, it's downhill. That's okay, coming up. So if you're looking now and you're wondering, okay, now there is a red laser, what is that? So that is a pointing laser that we use to help uh, the pilots uh, know where they're shooting. Uh, yeah. Since this can be on all the time and uh, it's red, so it's high contrast with with all the blueness. So. Uh, Bullseye, Dan. Yeah, then I have to it's easy when I'm low. I have to come up now. <laughs> oh, 
Pablo, why do we see the color shift where from the green to purple on the laser? Yeah, so uh, what happens is that the, the laser is, is most intense uh, next to the window. So if you're looking from the top of the, of the image, that's very close to from where we're shooting. Uh, the laser is conical, uh, so most of the energy uh, is happening uh, very close to the window. And so uh, that's where and it's green laser, right? So, so we're seeing uh, that super intense light uh, very close to us. As we're going down, uh, a lot of that light is being absorbed by uh, organic molecules. All these little flakes that you see in the screen now, uh, that is absorbing and is fluorescing in the blue. So uh, as energy is dissipating into the water, uh, we're seeing this glow-in-the-dark um, uh, uh, particles uh, okay. telling us. Yeah. Let's slow the uh, floating up here. Oh, How wow. many centimeters away do you need to be? Three, ten? So our, our optimal measurement is uh, 300, in fact, three meters. Oh, yep, okay. yep, yep. So to answer the question about the hydroids, um, hydroids are capable of making uh, a chitinous skeleton, wow. but not That's mineral shit. embedded like um, the, the true corals. That's... I got some uh, sand coming off the vehicle there. I can turn the to a different heading if that's affecting the measurement there. That's uh, just yeah. under four meters now. Yeah, yeah that's okay. Yeah, you can four go a little meters. further. Yeah, so, so we, we're seeing a little bit of, uh, of, of course, you know, different signal. I, I cannot tell top of my head the pigment that we're seeing here, but uh, but we're seeing a differentiation with the rest of the background. So that's good news. Uh, another another first for us uh, that we're seeing here. Uh, and this brand, uh, remind me, this is a hydroid. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think that's good. Okay. Off we go. And we have a Brian question. What do the bottom drawling sharks eat in this barren oasis? I don't know. Um, <laughs> my guess is anything they can catch. So I'm beginning to think that the features we're seeing are geological and not trawl, because we're seeing, continuing to see this very striation pattern. So it's probably more of a, a paleo shoreline relic or something. Um, that we're seeing in this step terracing and not, and we were just seeing the start of the this a little bit higher up the slope. So are we at the top of the guillot? More or less. Like okay. We're not at the, we're not at the, Top, the top. specific highest point, but yeah, we are out in the flat expanses in the middle. You can uh, of slide her 20 off to the west there, or the east, I mean. Sure. And this is an area I have actually done extremely little work in because. Oh wow! Look at that sharp. We drop generally off. we generally hang out on the sides of these features. Um, and so I think this is only the second or third time I've ever done a dive out here in the middle of it. So why is it that the top, the surface where we're at right now, is extremely barren, but when going up the sides, it's usually so full of um, biomass? Great question. I don't have a good answer for you. It's one of those things we don't quite understand. Generally, it's but the sediment load. Yeah. Like, and in, in you're in other places with a higher sediment input, this is like meters of sediment hanging on, on the top of these features. Um, and so you get a lot of, you know, life on the like sediment, but you don't get any corals or sessile organisms. Um, here, 
where we've got a little more current that's scouring and a lot less sediment input from the surface. Um, and we're seeing some, at least a little bit of exposed hard ground. Um, we can start seeing more biomass. Uh, well, coral biomass, at least. I mean, there, you don't uh, don't underestimate how many little things are living in that sediment. There's a lot. Just not things we can see with the ROV. We need to bring it back with the push cores. So we just passed one um, Come down. bamboo coral, and here's uh, an eritogorgia hanging out on this uh, uh, rock face. Yeah, this feels very um, kind of paleo shoreline-y. I've seen similar structures uh, on the south sides of both Howland and Baker Islands over in the Phoenix Islands. Had these, and we were, they weren't on the top of those features because they were still islands, we were on the sides. And, um, and they had these right. really impressive um, cliff structures that were often overhung and even had little caves might be too strong of a word but you know areas you could fit the entire rov in that were overhung and remote recessed back in and this looks very similar to that another big beautiful eritogorgia here <laughs> where'd her go <laughs> her out the clip. <laughs> fell into a hole <laughs> That amuses me. <laughs> <laughs> you hit the rock barrier too low. Should get Lynette to move the ship. <laughs> yeah, it's not one of my virtues. So one of our um Scientists ashore was looking at that Eritogorgia and believes it's a different species of Eritogorgia than we've been seeing. It has tighter whorls, making it Eritogorgia bella. Did you get a? I didn't. I wasn't paying attention. Did we get a DSC of it? Yep. So question online, what is a paleo shoreline? Is it prehistoric or something? Yep, it just, um, Corley, what's the, la the Latin for, or for paleo actually mean, do you know? I feel like it means old or Yeah, something. I do too, but I, w I didn't want to say that without checking. I um, don't know for sure, let me look it up. Um, yeah, so a paleo shoreline is just an old shoreline. So when this feature was um, an island, um, oh, it looks like a predatory tunicate, for our tunicate fans on, on shore. Does. Oh, um, tunicate. Um, but yeah, so at a, at a when this seamount was higher in the water up near the surface and having its top eroded, um, this was likely um, spent a while r right at shoreline or at sea level, but then the feature subsided quickly enough that and or a combination of sea level change Turn and on subsidence. On this, feet, this little part of the feature sank fast enough that it wasn't eroded flat. So what is subsidence? Alex, shoot that one to the geologist. Uh, subsidence is what happens, so when you have a volcanic feature, there's like a lot of magma input and it can kind of create this like buoyancy in the, um, in the lithosphere and in the crust, but as you start to cool the magma, as the plate moves away from whatever volcanic epicenter or whatever is supplying the magma, um, science is good with them. It cools right. and it kind of like almost like shrinks or compresses mm -hmm. down. So as you move away, it'll start to decrease. Yeah, get shorter and shorter, subside. So since these geodes and seamounts are four, greater than 1,400 meters deep. Okay, is that wide. from sea level rise or subsidence or a combination of both? 
Yeah, you could turn off the penitent light. Can you repeat the question? Okay. <laughs> in front of the yeah, question. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a complicated one, um, especially for four or right now five on. in the morning. And so the all these features are about 1,400 meters deep. Okay. Um, and we know that they, so many of them broke the surface. So why are they so deep? Is it because of the subsidence or is it because of sea level changes, like the sea level was lower once upon a time? Or is it a combination of both? It's a combination of both and also erosion. So we talk a lot about wind erosion, but wave erosion, can, like the current, can also have an effect. Um, and, you know, for instance, if you had some sort of carbonate feature, like that could also get uh, dissolved. Although I think the CCD is actually generally deeper than a lot of these, so. Which is the calcite compensation depth, which is, there's this area in the ocean called the CCD, mm -hmm. and it's the area where uh, the dissolution of calcium carbonate essentially is happening quicker than it can be formed. But I think it's like three, do you know? It's like it's like 3,000 like meters or, 4, or something. Meters or something, I don't remember. Um, but this would... Um, but yes, I but I would say it's a combination of all all of those things. But I would uh, I would think that the subsidence was the biggest impact. I mean, Definitely. sea level rise very only varies yeah, a couple yeah, hundred yeah. meters. Yeah, sea level rise is going to have a very minimal yeah. effect. Okay. And then when you were talking earlier about wave erosion, is that only like surface waves, or is that also those benthic currents? I think it, I mean we. When we talk about wave erosion, we definitely think about it in terms of surface waves. Mm -hmm. But, um, I don't know, we're definitely getting into an area of geology that's a little bit outside my wheelhouse. But I feel like, why couldn't it also be current? Ooh, I like so the view you're getting on the Beautiful Gorgia here, we're looking at. Looks like a cool cave. Hey, Brian, can, yeah. can you explain the this helicoidal uh, shape i mean it's really really symmetrical i really like it yeah, yeah it's beautiful um and a lot of the chrysogorgids have some form of of spiral pattern associated with them i don't think Actually, we have a really good hypothesis yeah. on exactly what causes it um other than probably some kind of structural support um for them to use the the, the helical shape um for additional structural support and they can probably use a smaller or less strong protein in their skeleton uh, and get some mechanical structural support based on the shape of the, the stalk. Um, but a lot of the chrysogorgids have some form of, of pattern like that. Same one? Yep, same one. But not quite as healthy though. These rocks are beautiful. Look yeah. at these, these steps, um, erosion steps like this. Are those like this sort of concave pattern? Is that from like wave action at that point? Come down. The come biologist down. would guess yes, but I don't know, Coralie. Like. Is, are these oh. these different pattern steps? Are they um, are they at different sea level stands where the wave eroded down in and then it came up? And I mean, I think yes. I honestly don't know that much about paleo shorelines. I'm not a coastal geologist at all. So this is a a big cusky we're looking at here. Right. Do we want to continue to the northeast here into the flat? I can uh, slide along the wall for a while at least. Yeah, let's slide. Let's let's explore at least a tether length um, along it. Okay. Okay, 
zoom in there, Daryl. Looks like probably a baby bamboo. Where these young ones are harder to see the the nodes on, uh, but that's a little enough. tighter there. Yep, there's a node. All right, thank you. It is very soft. Mark where I touched there. Yeah. Oh. It's so soft that makes me question my paleo shoreline a little um, idea a little bit though, because it just wouldn't it wouldn't stand up to much much wave action at all being that soft. Push in there a bit, force. Uh, turn that pen and tilt light on again for me. Some type of uh, chrysogorgid. Yes. Sorry, I was hoping you were going to say that. I was like, chrysogorgid, chrysogorgid, it's got to be. Cute little dainty um, polyps. It's got some kind of amphipod or something there on its stalk, too. Is that another little tourniquet right there? Uh, Come down. Maybe. Five meters. Or a sponge. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I got tugged there. That's fine. Go away. This is just some cool make geological sure the features. This while we're up against the wall there, it'll pull us off it. Yeah, average CCD depth is 42 to 4,500 meters. Yeah. Okay. Um, What is CCD again? Calcite carp compensation depth. Car carbonate compensation depth. Sorry. Wait, what? Oh. And what exactly does that mean? Oh, because it's arachnid too. Yep. Um, so generally, shallow water it. corals uh, and some other things see. will like. Try and zoom in, Daryl. See what we um, got there. Diatoms. Etc. will make their skeletons out of calcite or aragonite, uh -huh. um, okay, which is go the Thank same. You. Just a different molecular structure, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so there's this point in the ocean where the dissolution of calcium carbonate uh, is more than how quickly things can make their skeletons. So it's this area where kind of like you don't assume to see a lot mm -hmm. of and it's all off. Cal calcium carbonate. Okay. So this is past that it's level? Really soft. No, it's not. Surprising. Okay. But it does, it, it as does, you get deeper, yeah. it also gets harder to lay the skeletons down. And that's why you don't see the colonial sclerotinians um, uh, very deep. Like they're on the shallower end, they they disappear um, earlier than the octocorals, um, and what it's kind of octocoral dominated down here, like all the things we've been seeing, mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the the cup corals seem to be able to be more effective at it, and so you see them far deeper than when after the analipsamias and the madrepores disappear. This uh, seafloor is so um, soft, it, uh, it might be one of the contributing reasons we're not seeing a lot of um, corals on there, is they just have trouble 
um, getting purchase or attaching on something so soft is one possibility as well. In submarine canyons, you'll actually see where the corals can attach to these mudstones and things like that, but then they slough off. And so you don't, you get, you don't get very old, as old a corals there because the rock is um, just so unstable. So this doesn't appear to be very thickly crusted. Is is the crust just less likely to um, lay down on this type of rock? Um, well, whatever this is, if it's accumulating, it just makes it harder for the, the ferromanganese crust to form. So it's well known that there's like a couple things that aid in the formation of ferromanganese crust, and one of them is having bottom currents that wipe away sediment. But if there's a lot of sediment, it's just, you know, it makes it way harder for crust to form. So I'm thinking, yes. I think, I don't know, I'm thinking that this is just still, because it's still soft, it's like maybe still in the process of forming uh, or diagenesis it or something. Is that a little cuskiel? Uh, it no could baby? be, yeah. So here's the real question. What hit the rock before us? Because that looks like a scar. It does. Was it me? <laughs> Maybe Dan. it was Mike. Maybe it was Mike. <laughs> <laughs> OK, you can go away. Look at the Atalanta view, that slab. Um, below it, that's a really cool shot. Turn off the uh, port and starboard light, boy. You can uh, tilt up a bit and then come up with me. Keep the zero delta. I'll pop up to the top here and see if there's any. Okay, did you just tag that as Antelada highlight? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, do we want to keep moving to the northeast here? Not yet. To the flat? Give us a minute. Okay. Um, I mean, ideally we'll stick on this wall, but I don't know what, what is, uh, what is the most effective, what's your recommendation on that? North. Huh. <laughs> or south. <laughs> uh, definitely you, I you can't have either of those. I definitely <laughs> want to go, you know, the direction of traffic tra travel overall should be about zero to zero is the ideal track. Um, How about 20 meters, 315? <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's the question is, do we zip her back and forth sure. in tight zips on here or do we make longer passes back and forth? Um, I don't know, ask her, tell her we wanna go north, see what she can do. Can zigzag back and forth there. So it looks like maybe this is a really cool example. It looks like yeah, we have two different try species of Rhinogorgia right next to each other. Yep. Um, tight leash anyway, so you can get 20 meters closer to the wall. Yep. Are you ready? S yeah. Bridge nav. Ooh. Can we I move two know. zero meters, 315, please? Thank you. So this is where I'm going to be risky and go out and actually give species names. So I think this might be Aritagorgia magnus paralis and Aritagorgia bella um, side by side. Which it's rare. I don't remember ever seeing the two of them right next to each other in, in this kind of such a nice down, um, combination Can to I see the differences. Can I give you a reset? Sure. And Steve's going to correct me here in a second and tell me I got it wrong. Yeah, they're both in the different family now. Ooh. I'm over here just like, oh, it's a mama and a baby.
Uh, yeah, come keep the delta par for now. Par zero. So I got at least half right. It's one is Magnus Morales and the other is um, uh, it's a different species, but we're still does not sure which one. That's good. Uh, moving the ship that way so I can get a little closer without. So any particular one you want to see closer? Uh, the one on the left is right. the one that we are less sure of. give you a sense of, of like how much of the taxonomy we still are kind of understanding is Steve Oskovich has been referring to this as a Rutigorgia species number 40 <laughs> um, in the Pacific. I misspoke. There was sample 40 from um, a 2017 cruise. So. All right, that's good. Thanks a lot, Dan. Okay, come on, come back up to the top of the wall. I'm a and that's what I get for trying to go to species level. But you know what? You tried. Yep. We appreciate you trying. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Look at that. Just that is so straight cool. Straight line. Yeah. Cool. Another Ritagorgia on this little corner. Look at the angle of that in the mezzo. Oh, wow. Yeah. As we're looking at the uh, the scanning sonar on the ROVs, and it's it's a almost a perfect 90 degree cut. Wow. Is this common in nature to see such a straight line, like for these ancient oh, places? Like this one is not. Straight line. I don't know like, about like for paleo shorelines, but. Straight lines almost never happens, right? No, it it does. Oh, it does. Yeah, a lot in geology. The ninety degree is weird, but like, is it not working? A lot of times you'll get these kind of like one hundred and twenty mm -hmm. um, degree angles, and mud cracks is like kind of common, and also it's like I don't know. So like in columnar joining and in mud cracks, you'll get these kind of perfect 120 degree angles in them. And it has to do Take with another, like uh, the another chemical, mechanical properties of rocks that just make it break that way. Bridge, nav. Awesome. Can we have the you. same step, please? 20315. Thank you. There you go, I'll look down just a bit more for us. Look. Uh, later more. Before we leave the top, I'd like to look at the sponges. Right there. Come down five. A viewer online says this is Atlantis. <laughs> Since last year we found the yellow brick road to Atlantis, now it just led up here. Okay, Daryl, you can uh, do your thing. Thanks. Push in this a bit more. Uh, 
Okay. Yes. This sponge is weird. <laughs> Why does it have little hairs? Those are its attachment points. And so it's kind of feeling for other places to attach on that top rim. And if you look, they're, they're bigger and heavier on the sides and bottom where it's actually attached to the um, thing I'm trying to figure out. I feel like we've never seen is. this type of sponge before. I, I don't think we've, know if we've seen it on this expedition. I've certainly seen it before out here. But the, oh, name, yes. the name is eluding me. I'm looking right now to see if I can remember what the name is. All right, that's good for us, thanks. Right here. Right, I see the other one, or you? Uh, no, they're looking pretty sure they're the same thing. Doing a hold position here, Dan. Sure. Bridge, nav. Can we hold position, please? Thank you. Let's uh, zoom in there for a start. Given the, um, how soft and white the set of the rock feature is and the steepness of these cliffs it just makes me think of like the white cliffs of dover so that mark there is uh, uh the jaws of the magnum were touching when i landed there yep it has like a hardness of like three or something yeah Okay, it can go away. Coralie, do you mind giving us a little history or hist or a little explanation of Mohs hardness scale? Uh, wait, what am I hardness scaling? Yes, well, <laughs> I was just saying that this looks like a three or a four to me, given how sim easily it breaks and scratches. Yeah, it might even be more, but if it's if it's silicate, I don't know. Hardness, uh, we talk more about minerals than um, rocks. So if there's a bunch of different minerals in this, then it's hard to tell. Okay. Okay. But if it's if it's mostly silicate, that would be quartz or something. Um, quartz has a hardness of about I think it's seven. Seven through. And remember, the hardest mineral is diamond, which is a 10. And then your fingernail is like a 2-ish. So this is some kind of glass sponge. <laughs> Struggling to come up with anything past glass sponge. Um, this is also a test of our uh, extendable porch and cliff perching. That's a good idea. <coughs> Thank you. Can we get it tighter? <laughs> oh, we can, yeah. Sorry, this is I take off. Right there. Okay, there I'll go. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get that past glass sponge. All right, that's good enough to send the screen grabs to a few people. All right there. Dan, is it easier or harder uh, diving on the side of these cliffs than like um, the slow incline that we have been diving on? It's, uh, you can retract the porch. Uh, it's easier in some ways and more challenging in others. <laughs> <laughs> Very I, 
Miss America. <laughs> I didn't hear the full question. Easier uh, or harder? Yeah, right. just jumping on these cliffs, like going on the side of them versus the slow incline up that we have been seeing. It's definitely a lot more fun. Leapfrogging from cliffside to cliffside. Uh, I don't know if you want to see this. Yep, guy I, yep, I will take zooms on pretty much everything that Ready. we haven't seen and that one I don't think we've seen yet. Okay, I can uh, push in a bit there, Daryl. So we know corals can live thousands of years old. How old can sea sponges live? I don't know. This one is cool. Yeah. I think it this is like some type base. of regadrella, potentially. Uh, oh no, it doesn't have the, the parking all closed. Never mind. What is this? Push in a bit more for us. Whatever it is, it's super beautiful. I think it's some kind of yurted. All right, thank you, Dan, we're done. Right there. It's like the tiniest little coral to the right of it. Go wide there. Oh yeah, oh. I think it might actually be a little stop. I'm not sure what that was actually. Could have been a barnacle actually. Do you barnacle want or a little uh, crinoid. Do you want a tight view of it? Or? No, it's okay. It's so small we'll never get a, a good idea on it. Right there. You want to start stepping maybe 20065 with the ship? I think another uh, 315. Another 315? Yeah. 10 meters? Sure. Bridge nav? Yeah, if you can go, maybe can we you move can go. 10 three, meters five. 315, please. Thank you. What was that, Dan? Uh, put the porch out again for me. Go ahead and push in there, Daryl. This is some type of planar chrysogorgid. All right, that's probably good. Thanks. Right okay, I can pull that porch back in. <coughs> the upper bumpers but they tend to make rain Roger. I'm really enjoying this difference in geology compared to the other dives even though there's less biomass and biodiversity yeah it certainly looks interesting I was going to say, are you liking this one a lot more than like yesterday's dive? Because um, yesterday was all about the biology, the coral, but it seemed like the geology was pretty stagnant. Every dive has its um, so, uh, drop down here on this. pros and oh, cons. Well. What, she's trying, <laughs> what she's trying to tactfully say is she only likes volcanic rock and the sedimentary rock she doesn't care about. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I think it looks cool, but yeah, like, I don't. It's a uh, penitentiary off, off or on. Don't understand. Thank you. I need a crazy, like, structural geologist to come up with some 
crazy <laughs> idea about how this was formed. Two more Ritagorgias hanging out together. So we have a question that says, so how readily do you think these features are impacted by tectonic activity? So, uh, hold what you got there for a minute. Look down a little bit. So, um, let me yeah. think before I answer yeah, this really quickly. That one's kind of a hard one to tackle. Um, so, We're in the middle of the Pacific Plate, uh, which means you would expect there to be no tectonic activity. However, you can get tectonic activity from the volcanism that's happening in the region. Um, so this region is kind of weird um, we don't really know how the line islands, which is these large chains of seamounts, atolls, um, in this area, how it was created. There's a hotspot model, there's a leaky transform fault model, there's, um, I'm trying to remember, I'm literally looking up a paper right now. Um, Tensional cracks in the lithosphere. Oh, no, we're all right. Um, all right. Or some sort of melting of the mantle and lithospheric extension uh, so are as all. As long as the ship's static. You know, theories. Mm -hmm. um, but plate tectonics in Three terms fire, of. Like take us closer, wouldn't it? Like what we see on the edges of tectonic plates, yeah. uh, we're not going to get that. Or if we're close to um, a spreading center, which yeah, you can do we are not. Part. So the nearest volcanism is going to be the Hawaiian Islands? Um, no. There actually should be some you can uh, get it come up a little bit, you know, kind of chase me down there. Just come sound. up to your sonar clears. I'm just amazed by the view from the sled yeah. from Atlanta. <laughs> I've got it under control. It's fine. The rocks are coming for you. They're soft rocks. <laughs> Hey, Dan. Yep. We're going to uh, go sleep for a little bit, but well, we're going to leave everything running. Roger. Uh, so if there's anything, you can just shut us off if there's any problems. Roger. You see, it won't hurt the instrument. Are but, you, uh, uh, you're not running, the, actively running the laser, though, so you're not getting any data? Not getting any data, but we are taking images with our still camera just 
so we can see it. But uh, we're keeping right. everything up and running and warm. Right and then there. we'll be back in like four hours, probably, and uh, continue taking data. Roger. Sorry about the uh, cliff. It's going to be boring for you guys to <laughs> get the laser butt on the wrong end of the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next time. We'll next time. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Push in there, Daryl. Thank you. Uh, zoom in there for a minute. I'm gonna try and play with this sonar. It's driving me crazy. Where'd it go? Uh, kind of far away here, but oh, it's been decapitated. Down to it. Sure. So, question in the chat, Brian or Corley. Uh, why don't you name one of these unnamed sea mounds after yourself? It's considered extremely bad form. When did that start taking, like when, uh, when did that norm start taking form? Since like, it seems like all the early 1800s explorers named everything after themselves. Is that like 1950s, 1900s? I don't know. I'm also not 100% sure how often they named after themselves versus named after their sponsors and then other the next expedition oh. named it after the, the people person. behind them. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, and there's also, like, there's a, there's a formal process you have to go through, and I forget the details. It's quite a bit of work um, to get a formal name accepted. Um, it ends up being, like, a 100-page document to Good try and go name right a there. feature officially. Um, and yeah, naming for people who are, are still alive is questionable. Um, and certainly you're not, it, it's considered bad form to name it after yourself. Push in there. Ah, a pick, uh, what? No, crinoid, Never mind. For a second there, I thought that was a sea spider. So tiny, it's tiny. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I see it, but I don't. Know, I can't tell what it is. Okay, it can go away. Can do another zero uh, six five if you want. Seems Question to be working. Totally. Does water pressure at the bottom of the ocean have oh, any she's kind still of moving? effect on okay. tectonic Sorry. movement? Was not paying attention. Sorry, I'm like trying to figure out something based on the last question and oh, struggling with Google the Earth. At the nearest volcano? Yeah. I think it's Louie or <laughs> Yeah, it works for me. I'm just gonna <laughs> 
guesstimate. Okay, we're like somewhere. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. I'm just gonna say somewhere around here. Yeah. How many miles is that? Okay, not miles. We're about 5,000 kilometers from the nearest um, active volcano. Which would be? Which would be uh, about 3,000, or yeah, almost 3,000 nautical miles. No, oh. I'm sorry, what's uh, what's the name of the volcano? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pitcairn Islands, which is a British territory. Well, wouldn't we be closer to Mauna, Mauna Kea than or Mauna Loa? Oh yeah, Kilauea, I'm thinking I mean. in terms of Line Island. Yes, from Line Island, from the hot spot here, yeah, that makes sense. But the nearest active volcano should be um, Kilauea. But that's a different hot spot, not the one that formed yeah, these islands. Yeah, it's a different hot spot track. Let me look how far away we are from Luihi, which actually it's not called Luihi. Sorry, I know that they renamed it. Oh, they did. I missed that. Yeah, we should only be like 800 nautic miles from from Kilauea. Yeah. Yeah, we're like 850 nautical miles from Luihi. Which, okay, let me look up the actual, the new name of Luihi. Oh gosh, it's a name. I'm gonna have a really hard time pronouncing. Kama a e hua kanaloa. Sure. So Dan, we have a question for you, which is, what are the pros or the cons of Argus versus Atalanta? Uh, I'll push it there a little bit. some light on it. Sorry, did I hear an Atalanta question? I was. I uh, did, yes. What are the pros and cons of Atalanta versus Hercules? Or sorry, Atalanta versus Argus. Oh, it's my understanding that because Atalanta, or sorry, that Argus is a lot larger, you can fit a more sophisticated payload, in there a bit. like a better camera. But Atalanta is smaller and more uh, dexterous and less prone to being tossed around by heavy sea conditions. So I think that's the main reason why we're using Atalanta this cruise and not Argus. Awesome, thank you. And on that note, I am signing okay. off to go do an interaction. I didn't hear anything from Brian, so we'll move on. Yeah, it's a very sad looking um, Chrysogorgia that is not doing, uh, not Chrysogorgia, that's not doing very well. Fine. Okay, just check, check. Copy paste. Look at that little like a r like step right there where you got the that's really interesting. Uh 
Uh, you can put the bubble camera in H11 if you want. We're using the wrong button. What are you trying to do? Uh, yeah, you can do that. It's not bleeding to death, is it? Yeah, sorry, I thought you wanted to move stuff around on the screen. So it definitely looks like the Eritagorgias have some form of advantage here as being the only coral we're really seeing. We saw a couple of bamboos, um, but they are definitely the healthy and happy corals of the day. Are these Eritagorgias sticking off the wall? This is definitely not what I expected looking at the sonar data when we were planning this dive. I thought this was going to be boring. A, well, a step, a, a step terrace kind of thing where we would have, you know, a five meter um, wall and then a five meter flat and then a five meter wall kind of gradually over, you know, a hundred meters. What not is this? A single. Is this an Eritagorgia? It's a stalk of uh, one that's been decapitated. Okay. And then secondary colonized by a bunch of hydroids. But I did not anticipate one single wall in here. And this is why we come down and ground truth the sonar data. Because as good as, as these sonars are, they still, you know, only look in a 30, I think we think this, we're planning on a 30 meter grid size. So each pixel more or less is. Uh, represents 30 meters of seafloor, and you can hide a lot of terrain in 30 meters by 30 meter square. So we normally see these corals on harder rocks, but it seems like at least these Eritagorgias and really like these soft, softer rocks. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it could be the rock type, certainly, or it could also be um, the current flow here um, that's controlling what, what types of corals we're seeing. Um, I think I said earlier that if, you know they're, they're in canyons where you've got um, a lot of these vertical walls, but they slough off. You can see where... Um, you can see where certain chunks of rock have fallen off and just crushed a whole bunch of old coral. That basically the coral almost might get too heavy and help pull um, rock slabs off of the walls and the canyons. Um, but I have to admit, I'm out here. I don't think I've really ever seen this rock type. Um, yeah, I haven't either. You know, like I, I, I've seen some of these really tall vertical walls with. Um, erosionary features in them around the bases of some of the atolls that are still like Howland and Baker and, and shallower water, but the rocks were not this soft. They weren't this whatever chalk substance we're seeing here, or they certainly didn't seem to be when we poked them. So this is quite different than what I'm used to seeing or experiencing in terms of the rock types. Look at that whole slab formation, like that whole that whole slab. And it's just so flat. This is very interesting. Mm 
Any the ID on him, or are you good? No, nah, it's, it's the same Rita Gorgia you've been seeing. You don't need to go, f unless you want to put yourself on the slot for funsies. Mm -hmm. I don't think it'll fit. <laughs> Could try. No, I'm, I'm quite sure that's the same one of the two Rita Gorgias we've been seeing. Well, it would fit so far. <laughs> no, we don't need to wedge the vehicle somewhere, thanks. Rub some Niskins off on the wall. Pilot's just trying to make the navigator anxious. <laughs> You're doing great over there, Lynette. Just keeping us on the wall. down cam and that's so I can see anything that's interesting below us which That looks potentially different. Right. It. Push in on that guy. Oh, it, yep. It's just one of those Camacho like crinoids we've seen a couple times now. Not different. Okay. Thank you. Go white. Down while you move. I will move the boat. We'll drop down while we're waiting. Oh, she's still moving. Right. It. I'll drop down while we're running out of leash. There. You have to chase me down. Right. It. Pushing on that guy there. This looks like a similar bamboo whip to what we uh, looked at last. This whole wall seems to be a couple of glass sponges, a bunch of Ritagorgia, and a couple of these bamboo whips with a few uh like crinoids hanging around for good measure. Okay. Science is happy, thanks. Go white. Sounds like Brian's seen the wall now. I've never no. done it, seen it. <laughs> I, I'm looking for new things. All right, do it. Me too. Well. Sure. It's, um, we know the height of it, so if we get in trouble, we can just come up. It's not like a, you know, 100 meter tall cliff.
I always wonder when I see rock piles like this, like what triggered, what was the final trigger that caused the rock to fall off after some number of millions of years? I always wonder if that's going to happen while we're down here. I wasn't going to yeah. say that, but my, <laughs> was, that is the logical next question. <laughs> I don't know. How much of a disturbance do you got to make, especially on the overhanging ones? Yep, so. yep. I think it's, I don't know, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the age-old question, like, when is an earthquake going to happen? Like, when is the tension in the rock just too much, or what causes slope failure? And yeah, and especially when you think about big slope failure. Mm -hmm. Pretty solid route. Can you pick it? Pick it? Like poke it? Yeah. Like What's that? Oh, okay. Well. Oh, I just pushed on it a little. Yep. You can see where I touched it with the porch there. Yep. Yep. Still that super Still, soft stuff. Yeah. Last watch got a sample, so we'll be able to get a good look at it. Okay. Um, Sweet. That looks different. It definitely leaves uh, white on the, you can see what it left on the porch here. It's where, it, the bottom right, it's where it, yeah, this like thing right there. I am, yeah, I'm coming back up. Yeah, Lynette's moving that way. But Sure. Little rat tail hanging out there next to the rock. Power's on. Perfect distance there, right on the 20 mark. That's how you got to, you can see where it, how it behaves as long as he doesn't change his heading radically. how you would feel about it from a vehicle ops side, but if we get to a spot that's particularly pretty in a promontory and wanted to take a few minutes to do a really nice beauty shot of Herc, um, I would be fine with that. Sure. We're headed the right way now. Yep. The current's favorable, so you hold that uh, altitude there, I'll come closer to you. Might have to tilt down a little bit. No, I'll get closer. If you zoom in, it'll just be all bouncy. I think we uh, we see these guys, didn't we? Maybe I missed these guys. We were down low. You can zoom in just a touch, but if you zoom in too much, it'll...
don't think we saw uh, these bamboo. guys. Yep, yep, looks like a little bamboo. Yep, got a bamboo in a bit of gorgia here. Kind of tell the current is flowing from left to right here based on the direction the um, Ritagorgia is bent. I'll have to come up a bit now. Oh, tethers. Bunk in your camera. <coughs> Current's not quite strong enough to yeah, keep the tether off of this thing. Okay, we can find another spot. Stretch it back out there to pull that out. So if you're just joining us, we're exploring an unnamed geo, um, about 150 plus miles. Um, North northeast of Kingman and Palmyra, uh, and uh, we're out in the center, more or less, of the flat top of the Geo, and we found this one significant cliff. Interestingly enough, um, so everything else around us on the sonar data looks real flat, and there's one little trough here with this um, good size um, cliff that we've been running along. We're at uh, 1,430 meters, approximately. And this wall seems to be very much dominated by a Ritagorgia with a couple bamboo whips thrown in there and the occasional um, Camachula crinoid. pretty baffled by the uh, geological origins of this feature. And frankly, even what type of rock it is, because it's super soft. With almost no, no or almost no manganese encrusting on it. Front row, do you have a sense of how tall the uh, the face actually is? How tall it is? Yeah, what is it, 30, 40 meters? Uh, I'll come back up and get a ping. I, I don't have to do it right now, but just at some point, let's actually note Herc's depth at the bottom and then at the top. So Argus's altimeter is bouncing all over the place. Yeah, I should be able to get a... TV already enough for her care, but yeah, I haven't been paying attention to the depth. So. I'm just kind of curious how 
since this is one feature, I'm looking. I've got the the bathy up in Flater Mouse back here, and trying to get a sense of how much the averaging really, how much the sonar averaged it out. Yeah, I think it's probably right around what your resolution is there. 20 meters, 25 meters. Okay. Like that. Yeah, it's Herx DBL saying we're at 25 meters. Okay, thanks. Another fish in there hiding in that. Um, crevice back there. Dead. What? It looks like a nest of eggs. Oh wow. These look so yeah, crazy. Yeah. Let's take a minute on this. Right there. Come down five for me. See if I can get it in the still camera here. Wow. So I've seen something like this once before in Indonesia, and I'm trying to remember what it's what these are called, but these are the um, the fibers that basically the sponges attach themselves to the seafloor, um, and they've just grown higher and higher, leaving this mass of um, attachment spicules um, below it. But I'm struggling to place these. Um, these sponges where they are. But that's a really, really cool um, kind of mass of life in its own way. And think about all the structure, um, the, lo the kind of brownish colored areas provide um, that are all grown out of the top part, which is the kind of the actively feeding part of the sponge. Um, can we sample it, please? Sure. Suction? Uh, we can try it. I'm suspecting you're going to have to tear it at least first with the manipulator arm. Yeah, I can, I can tear it with the slurp. Okay. Are you trying to get the attachment no. layers or the actual sponge? A little bit of both would be great. The attachment you want to, uh, Seems like the... You're pushing there. There, I'll get a close-up of it for a week. Oh. To do a little housekeeping here. For some reason, the attachment hairs, you know, when you're eating an artichoke and you get to the heart and it has that, like, hairy fibrous part. <laughs> I 
just going to put uh, something in that holster to keep this thing in there, and I never did. Okay, it can go uh, wide again. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have any... No slips are all No slips, yeah. You want to uh, give us... Uh, 75... <coughs> Can I zoom in there, Daryl? So you want both the uh, white and the brown? Yes, please. All right, it can go a little tighter. Yep, tighter, tighter. like vacuuming the dirt off of it. A uh, bigger piece or is that? Yeah, a little. <sighs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, since Yep, that's Katie probably pretty good for isn't uh, spicule ID. Here to watch the chat, I just saw um, a uh, message from Dijana who says hello to Dan and me. Who uh, Dijana is? Yeah, no, sorry, I'm listening back here. Too, she right? was a no-show to our interaction. Oh, yeah, I sat back here on the chat. I've already emailed uh, right, Megan and Kelly. Nice. Yep, I think okay. We're good. Did she? Uh, uh, did she say you want some of the Hold on, too many voices in my head. Roger, sorry. Here, sorry, I won't say anything. Uh, Turn the suction off for a minute. Roger, Roger. Sorry, Dan, was there a question for me? Uh, yeah, I just I wasn't sure if we had enough or yeah, if you wanted I'd some of the lower stuff. or. Yeah, if you can get some of the lower stuff too. Can, yeah. coming off there or not? HR5. Can't read it. Really. Zoom out just a bit for us, Daryl. Okay. HR5 or 6? Yeah, just confirming this is jar six, right? Correct. Okay. That's it, the, the live stuff we got is probably the most important. So um, if we can't get the, the attachment threads, that's fine. I can accept it. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to run the risk of doing significant damage to the whole thing. Right. Well, I can just push some off on the rock down here. That works then. seeing the there's, oh, oh, you there's got some, some hairs in there but I'm not seeing the the live tissue part of it in the jar yeah I can uh, 
Try a bigger piece there. Yeah, okay, that should be good, thanks. Yeah, I can see it in there now. Yep, Agreed. Okay. I can uh, bring the suction down to uh, 50 for a minute. I, I see them in there now, floating yep. around. Agreed. Okay, you can turn it off and then stick it on. Uh, okay, what was go that wide sample number? Uh, Not zero totally six. wide, but... 106, yeah, for example, good. 106 uh, polyobaganid sponge. And then uh, move the jar to uh, yes, please. see it? Oh, now I see it. It's a good place for the slurp. Just let it go. Okay, are we done here? Yep. Thank you. Do you, you. you want to put us on the uh, rail cam again, please? Another couple of beautiful Aritagorgias here. They seem to kind of come in pairs. Yeah, they do. I'm also curious why it's we're just seeing Aritagorgias here. And a couple bamboo whips, yep. Yeah. I wonder if it's... what. So what are they... What is the stuff that they use to stick to things? Maybe it's just they're more sticky? I don't know. It's totally possible, yeah. It could absolutely be some kind of preference uh, to the rock type attachment or the only ones that can really attach and stay attached to the super soft rock. Okay. So you think it's possible this rock was laid down as in the um, center of an atoll, like in the central lagoon? Forest out. Yep, looks like another little little baby bamboo with some kind of shrimp associate. It looks like pushing this a bit more. Perfect. Okay.
think I had to the right just a little. Maybe get the tether up here there. One stalked crinoid has found a home down in that crack. You okay to keep moving the ship? Sure. Bridge nav. Can we move two zero meters zero five zero, please? Thank you. I was just looking at the um, the oxygen profile for the um, push in there, no. the descent, and the oxygen got down to nine micromoles per liter on the descent. That's a low oxygen reading. It's, we're back up and holding very okay. steady at 65. Another Ritagorgia. I actually see it on two sonars now. Look up. Just a little for me. And some really cool shots of her from Atlanta on the other screen. Yeah. yeah you can actually see that long bamboo whip coming off the rock face in Atlanta's view as well. Something else there, I'm not seeing it. Oh, it's just a... Uh, yeah, it's another Ritagorgia. Do you want a closer look at the bamboo? Okay. Sure, yeah. Just a bit there and there. Almost looks like the bow of a ship coming out of the wall. I was just thinking that. Bridge nav. Can we move two zero meters zero four five, please? Thank you. As we look at this, you know, amazing geology here, um, 
it you know, makes me think about kind of the specialness of this place. Um, and I think that's an important thing to note because this area we're currently in is um, under consideration for being included in a new National Marine Sanctuary. Um, and the public comment period for that is currently open until I believe June 2nd. Um, and all, um, all U.S. citizens are encouraged to share their opinion um, with the federal government about whether or not this area should be considered uh, a national marine sanctuary. And there's a link on Nautilus Live and a little write-up about the sanctuary nomination process and how you can have your voice heard. Um, and I believe that closes sometime on June 2nd. So you've got another day or two um, to get your comments in if you want to share your thoughts. That looks like a Chrysogorgy of some type. Um, as in not an Eritogorgy, I mean. Yeah, this looks more like the kind of bottle brushy f growth form of um, Chrysogorgia. So probably right. the genus Chrysogorgia instead of Eritogorgia in the same family. Then I don't know. I know this. You're hovering, but if we could actually see if we can get a, a tight zoom on that, I think that's actually an encrusting sponge. Tight. Sorry, tight zoom on what? This thing right here. I think that might be an encrusting it, sponge. It didn't show up on that. Oh screen. yeah. Yeah, we can. Uh, you want to put the porch out? I'll we'll try a porch landing. So. I've seen one or two others, so we can, if this isn't an ideal, with it, since it's kind of overhung a little, we can, uh, oh, actually, it's a pretty, pretty good, fine. if you can come just a little right, we can actually really get it with the turbo cam. Roger. What do you think it is? I thought it was an encrusting sponge, but now looking at it and zoomed in in the uh, cam, I don't think that's true. It's actually a little place where the, the skin has fallen off um, the rock. So that's that's the bare talc we're seeing, not actually a sponge. Oh, good. Perfect. Thank you. We're done. I'm done. All right. Because I'm surprised we're not seeing any encrusted sponges. Um, that's something I would normally expect to see um, on rock walls like this often have encrusting sponges on them. But these are little slope failures. Uh, push in there, Daryl. Yep, and that's another little glass sponge. Was that other sponge that we con right collected not a glass uh, sponge? Go it was. Okay. Yep. I haven't seen any demo sponges yet. I'm going to try to bring Atalanta a little closer to you. Try 320. Sure. Bridge nav. 